nine steps to removing credit report errors because did you know that it has been said statistically that over 80 percent of americans have an error on their credit report which means that it could be hindering their score from being less than what it should be did you also know that about 79 percent of the people who dispute those errors actually get results and get things removed so what does that mean? That means that if you just at least attempt to get those things removed off of your report that are in error, it's a great chance that you'll get those things removed. And an even greater chance if you stay diligent and persistent in making sure you get errors removed from your credit report. So here are a quick set of nine steps to getting those credit report errors removed. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to grab the free credit class that we've made available through the link down below. So that way you can understand credit, take full advantage of what credit can do for you and understand it in a way that helps you uh, get towards the score that you like or desire and deserve to have on your own. Or if you decide that you wanna hire somebody, you at least know that they know what they're talking about. So get access to that free credit class if you have not already. Now, let's get into the nine steps. And of course you got Mr. Smith, point five of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And in this brief video, I wanna to talk to you about the nine steps. So in this brief, audio depending on how you're tuning in i want to talk about the nine steps that you can take in order to clean up those errors that are on your report number one is pulling your report like get your reports in other words from the three bureaus the three bureaus being equifax transunion as well as experian those three bureaus you want to get your reports and you can do that through the annual it's a free annual credit report so um basically a free annual credit report.com allows you to get access to that and it's just a report so i want to go into number two because number one is great but number two is greater number two is get accurate scores because the annual credit report the free one that they allow you to get every year doesn't include the credit scores it just shows you everything that's on your report and if you dispute solely based on that then that is what can keep them or give the bureaus more time to respond and less time for you to actually get things removed so it takes longer for you to get items deleted if you take that route however if you go to a site like myfico.com myfico and get accurate scores for your report then guess what now you're in a position to know exactly what your score is but you're also able to see what's on your report and once you get what's on your report you know how to address it in the following steps so step one pull up your report but step two is to get accurate scores number three is find all of the errors so you got to find the errors and record those errors Basically, you're looking at your credit report and you'll see a lot of different things. You'll see addresses, you'll see birthdays, you'll see employers, you'll see accounts that you may be familiar with, some you may not be familiar with. You'll see some that's listed as delinquent, you'll see collections, you'll see student loans, you'll see auto loans, you'll see mortgage, personal loan. You'll see a ton of different things on there. Any public you know, records, you'll see those things on your credit report. Now you want to scan all of those bad boys and say, you know what? This is an error. I don't care if it's a misspelled name. I don't care if it's a address that's inaccurate i don't care if the last in activity date is wrong meaning that they said you used this account in the time frame that you didn't if it's an error on there and you scroll through and you're looking at it and you're looking at transition your equifax experience you're looking at all of them and you notice any errors record them error here error here error there because now you're able to dispute those things from a factual standpoint and i'm getting ahead of myself but make sure you record all of those errors because it's a good chance that it's an error on your report it could be human error it could be some automation error that they created but either way if it's an error regardless of who committed the error an error on your report has the ability to be disputed by law the fair credit reporting act or agency allows you to dispute inaccuracies anything that's inaccurate you know on your account get them off erroneous things get them off all of those things need to be disputed in order to help strengthen your score. That's number three. Once you record it, you write a dispute. So I got ahead of myself, but number four is writing a dispute based on the things that you have recorded. Now, we want to go into number five because dispute, writing it is one thing, but you actually have to mail those dispute letters. And it'll be great if you do it with a return receipt. Basically, you'll be doing a certified letter. A certified letter you can have to, to deliver a return receipt. That way you know when it was received because it puts time on your side. But why is it important to mail those dispute letters? Because I hear often, you know, can I just dispute online? Yeah, you can. 
Can I just go on Credit Karma and hit dispute? Yeah, you can. And people have gotten results with those. So I'm not saying that it won't. And I can't say that I wouldn't uh, think that it does look more favorable, favorable to be able to just click a button opposed to mailing a letter. I will say that. But you got to think about it from a couple of different angles. For one, put more work on them and then you heighten the chances of getting things removed because if you give them more work to do by sending a letter, it works in your favor. For two, a lot of times if you dispute online, you waive some of the rights that you have going forward. So if you waive those rights, then when it's time to dispute again, some of those things have to stick and stay due to you waiving your rights with an electronic dispute. Just something to think about. And that's just at the time of this recording based on my knowledge. If you know anything different, let me know. But I would much rather position you to have your rights protected by mailing it versus giving you a quick way, a quick solution to go about addressing the error, getting the error deleted. So make sure you dispute and you you get it certified. And if you do a return receipt, that'll be even greater because what it does is allow you to roll into the next step, which is number six. Watch the calendar. Why is that important? Because they have a 30 day window when you dispute in this way, not just basing it off of the free annual credit report, not just going off of the digital online dispute. But when you dispute in this way and you're mailing the letter from the date that you mailed it or the date that they received it, the clock starts. So say you mailed it on a Monday they received it on a Wednesday or Thursday, the clock starts. So 30 days outside of that, they have to respond and either verify what it is you're disputing that you say in error or remove what it is that you say is in error. So if they don't do that, then that raises the grounds for removal going forward. So watching that calendar lets you know, okay, it was received on this day. I need to see some action by this time. So in my case, what I do is typically 35 days after mailing it, it usually buys enough time so that when I refresh my client's accounts, I'm able to see some results. Hey, something got deleted. Hey, something got updated to positive. Okay, this came back verified. How do I go about addressing and responding to that? So based on that 35 day window, it's 30 days that they have based on when they receive it. But I give, I set my calendar for 35 days outside of when I send the letter off. So that way it, it, it heightens the chances of when I check the and do my refresh date, as I call the credit report refresh date, something has taken place within that window. So start watching that calendar, set a reminder, whatever you have to do in order to make that happen for you. Number seven, you want to evaluate the responses. Like I stated, it can come back and they say it's verified. It can come back and it's deleted. It can have no response, but value those responses or validate or, you know, pretty much evaluate those responses, even if it's no response. So if you didn't get a response, that's still a response and that's grounds for removal. If you did get a response and it was saying that it was verified, then understand that you have to follow up with another process because if they said it's verified, it doesn't necessarily mean it was verified the right way. So understand that. Or you may get some things deleted and it just, it just lessens the workload. So you gotten certain parts taken care of and then you handle whatever else is still left if you have more errors that need to be disputed. After you do the evaluation of your responses, what you want to do is continue disputing. You don't want to give up. What you got to understand about the credit companies or the credit reporting agencies is they're in business. So they make money off of storing data, even if the data is in error, even if the data is, you know, derogatory and erroneous. It doesn't matter. Even if it's some inaccurate information on there, they're collecting the data and data is worth money. So they're able to sell that data, whether true or false, in order to earn profits. So by understanding that, that means you want to stay persistent and making sure you pursue disputing things that you know to be in error. So continue the disputing process. And this is where a lot of people drop the ball. A lot of people are like, ah, I wanted it done on the first round. I don't feel like going back and forth. And that's great. If you don't and you don't have the time or the, you know, the ability to stay persistent, then that's what we come in at. Feel free to reach out, set up a consultation, hire us for our services if you choose. If we feel like it's a good fit, if we feel like we can help you, then definitely consider hiring us and we can push the needle because we don't have a problem with going back, back, back and hitting them up and making sure that they do what they need to do in terms of restoring your credit. Or if you want to do it yourself, then by all means, we made that available for you as well. And if you want access to dispute letters that you're not writing yourself, then we got a DIY system that takes you through the process, gives you access to multiple letters in order to make sure that you're going about it in a good flow and you get access to the letter so you know exactly what you need to do. And it goes more in depth than what we can go in this particular 
segment. That being said, last but not least, number nine is stay organized. Because as you're getting things cleaned up, as you're getting things deleted, as you're getting things updated to positive, as you're building your score, you want to stay organized. So that way, if something comes up, you're able to say, nope, I sent this letter on this date. I didn't get a response by this date. And then you have another reason to dispute it and get things deleted. Or you can look at your data and the things that you're staying organized on and say, okay, I sent this letter. I sent this letter. I didn't get what I needed done. Okay, let me take this approach. And now I'm going directly to the creditors because I've already done X, Y, Z. So just some little tidbits to keep in mind as it relates to things that you need to do. Those are the nine steps. Let me know if that helped you in any way. Definitely grab the free credit class that's available through the link below so you can take full advantage of the free credit class. And if you would like to get assistance, that's what we're here for as well. But if you want the DIY system, that's available in the link below as well. Well, whatever suits your fancy, we got you. We just want to make sure we give you options in the form of free content, paid content, or hiring us for our services. Either way, we want to see you take your credit score to the next level because we know that it's possible. And like I stated in the beginning of the video, over 79% of the people who dispute items get those things removed. So you can definitely be a part of that 79% and we can make that number even higher. So that's all I got for this particular video. Mr. Smith, signing out. Salute.